Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. I believe yesterday in uh, the update, I commented that I would not be surprised if the NASDAQ and the S&P turned on a tick and blasted higher. And, but I have to tell you that when it happened, I was like, wow, I'm really surprised. And I think because I was wondering where the, 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 the force behind the short cover was pretty strong. And, and that was that. Now, having gone through that, and I came back out and I looked at my daily, and I looked at the four hour, and I broke down these moves. I am sticking with the count that I have. I really do not believe that intermediate wave C is complete just yet. So I don't think that that primary wave A is done. So primary wave B is not kicking off. Now, <clears throat> uh, one of my subscribers, and I really do uh, enjoy having them and, and commenting with them and talking with them, um, is suggesting that the intermediate wave C is complete here and that what we're involved in now is a diagonal, leading diagonal triangle up to form what I would have to assume is a, an intermediate A wave as a part of a new um, primary B. So these would, I could count these up in a minor degree then to form this diagonal triangle. And I did that. I moved this around. I changed that to the C. I went into the diagonal and, and I just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't look right to me, which doesn't mean that it's not what's in force. I believe what I'm then looking for would be additional evidence from the market. And that has to be what takes place really up in this area right now. If we are done and we're going to turn, then it's it should be quick, very solid, and very purposeful. In other words, they have a mission. Like buy side, we're done. Wh whatever they put out in terms of accepting the interest rate, three quarters of an interest rate hike, and that, okay, making that into a more bullish uh, atmosphere, which they have done. And, and again, credit to my subscriber who brought this up that the last three rates hikes have produced strong rallies upon their announcement or shortly thereafter. And <clears throat> I think that's a misnomer, but it's enough that a pattern gets set that when you're trading, you're like, okay, I'm going to keep my eye open, which is why I basically said last night that the, I would not be surprised if the markets turn and just really hightailed it higher. And even though that that's what they did, I didn't think they'd do it as intensely because where it really picked up was over in the Dow in those 30 stocks. They held off on really moving that index. They were moving the tech stocks. They were moving the NASDAQ and in turn, so was the S&P. But the S&P was not jumping like the NASDAQ was because the, the uh, short squeeze of the cover was more evident in the NASDAQ stocks because of Microsoft and Google earnings. Now, having said all of that, I then also have to bring in the technical side of this whole thing. And that's where we start to look at, at market profile. And within market profile, it all fit. It stayed within the profile. It went up. It went up to the top of, of a range. It stopped and sank. And now it can go back up and retest it. In fact, even under the under the current Elliott count, if this is A and this is B, and it's one, two, three, four, and now we're in that fifth, it should, it didn't make it today. This high is 12,698. So this, in all fairness, should go up and break above 12,700, as I've been talking about. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the next level after this is up there around uh, 12,783, I believe, or somewhere up to 93, somewhere in that area. And I know we have this here, uh, but it's just below. So there is the possibility that any follow through that we're going to get when Asia opens or when the European markets open or just carry through uh, tomorrow 
could take this up into that zone and then still complete this pattern, produce the minor five, and everything continues as, as I felt it would. Now, I have indicators, other indicators that are suggesting, yeah, we could make a turn here. This is the daily. We could make a turn and continue. But you see the daily started to go down. And then today, late, it turned it back higher. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to continue. But possibly we can finish the five and then turn and go down again. Now, if it is the other, then I have to assume that this diagonal triangle has also got one more little leg up to do, and but would need to stay under. You have to have your uh, boundaries, right? So your channel lines for this, which are the ones that don't really fit. Um, because somehow you'd have to count this. This would be one, two, three, four, and they're looking for five. So these would change. This, so it's a three waves, and that would be a three, and this has to be a three. And I could be, but I'm not sure. And if it is, then it's done and it's failed, and then we'll probably go down. So I don't understand quite how the triangle part is going to work out. I'm not saying it can't. So how I want to leave this right now. The market remains extremely volatile in terms of where should it go and what should drive it there. And so now we're, we're, we're having this division in the market where it's like, excuse me, but inflation is still real. And, and so we're rallying on some fundamental things that have already happened. And now we're picking up on, well, that should change going forward. But I believe that's on a basis of not of being out of this inflationary period and not going into a recession. So a lot, a lot gets built into why that should happen. But that, I have to tell you, what works in favor of this additional uh, other count that this is the beginning of a primary B wave is that typical B wave is convincing the world that, that you're bullish and the market's going up and we're just going, we're just out of here. And because you need everybody to come in and join you to get it there. And so to start a discussion on a recession not happening or whatever, that could go for three months. That could go on. If they get it going, folks, and the, and the Fed, for whatever reason, even though that they said, the Fed said additional large rate hikes are going to be necessary. They've already said that. But yet the market wants to assume no, it's okay. I, I don't, I don't find it all to be totally in line. But so it fits very cleanly in that it's a fourth wave, and it fits very cleanly in towards a B wave. But the B wave, if they really get it going, I agree, it can go. This the Nasdaq could go. They get through this earnings and they would keep it there for next for the next, for third quarter. And so I can't deny it, but I'm going to stay here for right now. And I'm going to continue to consider this a minor third. And I'll tell you why on that. Again, on the daily, I'm to, I need to count down the third wave subdivides. So there's one and two in the minor degree. Then it starts to subdivide. Here is minute wave one, minute wave two, and it's the third wave that again subdivides, right? So we're subdividing, so we're getting that extended wave. So there's the minute one, minute two, then sub minute one, sub minute two, and then sub minute three, four, and five for minute three, and then minute four and minute five for minor three. So that's how I count that there, which leaves this in that fourth wave position. So I am continuing to allow for one additional high for this C wave, which may in and of itself come out to be uh, a triangle and a leading diagonal triangle, but of a fourth wave, and then it dies. So a C wave triangle. And and we could call that one, we can call that two, three, four, and five, right? Because they're all coming in threes. And then we get a five. And it, and it could just poke its nose above where we've been at, at 698, poke its nose above 12,700, 
and then just kind of start to come tumbling down. And remember, I'm not permable. I'm not, I don't trade bullish or bearish. So again, today it was an extremely good day for trading. I got to be honest. It was a very good day. These moves were like, get out of my way. And it's like to, to try to trade against it. Now that was the mistake. So you trade with the market and, and using um, market profile. So you have points of control. Again, value area high, value area low, points of control. And then others as the market develops them as this whole move progresses. So we have yesterday's, we have previous, we have extended. We There are many different areas and that is what gets prog programmed into a lot of these algorithms. So the market will go there because again, it is demonstrating and showing us where supply and demand goes. Where are value areas? Remember value areas are there because that's where the buyer and the seller can meet and exchange. And when the buyers are still looking in value because the sellers are like, that's all I got for right there. The value will shift higher because the demand, the demand is there. Whatever's causing the demand, I leave that up to somebody else. But the demand is there and you just go to your next level. And market profile cleanly does produce these levels. And the ones that go unchallenged remain effective. And often, as we're seeing now, the market will suddenly just burst and go directly there. So it just it is a product and it is programmed in. So again, they they do work pretty well. So again, and market profile also, we still have another area just above all of this. And I believe it's going to be like it's at 12,783. Somewhere up in there is where I believe I saw it. And possibly that's where this will all complete. And then again, we get that minor four. And then the minor fifth wave down, I do believe should be fast. It should be quick. And I'm only looking for this. I know, only, right? And we put that fifth wave in, complete the primary. Oh, sorry about that. Complete the primary A wave and then set the stage for this B wave, which should be pretty kick butt. And I agree that it will take several months to totally unfold. So that's how I'm going to leave this right now. Now, if the market goes and says otherwise, I will change. But please understand that I am not, I am a day trader. And so I'm in there trading every day. I do not take on a bullish or bearish position or posture, I trade what the price action is telling me along with using market profile, the moving averages, Elliott Wave and Fibonacci. In combination, it puts parameters around expected or unexpected moves and that makes it tradable. So this is where I'm gonna leave it for right now. And uh, tomorrow we have Apple and Amazon. So tonight we had Meta and they they missed, but they came out and they were saying we're okay. Whatever they were saying did not cause them uh, too harsh of a, of a meltdown. Um, the stock is down about eight, seven or eight dollars right now as we start the Globex session. All right, leaving it there. Next update will be on Thursday, the 28th.